So um, in order to build the microfluidic device, um, they um, refer uh, this uh, droplet generation section, uh, the trafficking, uh, the filter, and then the zones for pairing and merging. So uh, here in the supplementary information, we can see briefly how it is produced. So they are going to, to use um, soft lithography. You know, here is the, the silicon wafer, then with a mask and uh, by uh, DRIE, they are going to produce these micro channels, as you can see here. And after that, they are going to sputter the, uh, sorry, uh, they are going to uh, spoon a SU8 so that they produce these um, another level and after that they they are going to cast the PDMES slab as you can see here how the design is replicated and after that in the in the um, on the glass they are going to sputter titanium and platinum so that they produce these electrodes so here you can see how the the electrodes uh, are located and here the microfluidic device is assembled. Um, so the, ele the electrodes are going to uh, produce an electrocoalition between the droplets. So um, here, here's a diagram um, where you can see how the small droplets are uh, with the red dye and the bigger droplets with the sky blue dye. And when they merge, they um, have this purple uh, color. So here we see. Um, the architecture of the microfluidic device, the generator of the droplets, and how these um, rails are going to enable the sorting of the droplets. So here we see that the big droplets are deformed by the wider rail so that they um, change their direction, and the small droplets are going, aren't going to be deformed by this wide rail. That's why they, they follow the narrow one the narrow rail as you can see here also this is the section for the droplets to combine together and uh, here we see the the top view of this architecture the dimensions and the side view for the trap to trap the droplets so they um in they um vary they variate um the height and also the the distance between the rails. So here we see the results when they variate the distance, the gap between the rails. So here in the scheme A, you see the time lapse of these a small droplet, and in the number two, the time lapse of the bigger one. And here in C, you see how the sorting variates according to the distance. In, of the separation of the rails. So they choose the distance uh, 10 micrometers, as you can see, here is the, that's the best one. And they also vary the height, the height of the, um, in, to, to trap the drop. So I just wanted to show you here a uh, quickly a video of how the, the droplets are sorted. Uh, I think the, the, here there are the two rails. So the wider rail is going to guide the bigger droplets so that they uh, can place here in this uh, merging zone. And we can see um, also how the small ones, sorry. And um, here's the video when they merge. So you see how they, the small ones go there. And with the electrodes, they produce these electrocoalescence, as you can see how uh, they have merged. So here was the video of the smaller ones. And uh, yeah, um, so they created this platform, which is very useful. And I uh, just wanted to show you here. Um, they uh, Here is what they change. So the big droplets are um, how they are trapped in the big grass is represented here in black when the big droplets are also trapped in the small traps is represented in gray when they use just one rail or no rail but if you use two rails then you have these a uh, um, high frequency of uh, right events and the white one represents the small dropper traveling in the small traps with these two options and they choose the 40 40 microns uh, distance for the best separation Okay, so uh, thank you very much.
Okay. Good morning, everyone. Today uh, I will talking about of this paper called uh, Nematophagus fungus arthrobotry oligospora mimics olfactory cues of sex and food to lure its nematode prey. Here uh, they investigated how Xenorhabditis elegans responds to the predatory fungus Arthrobotia oligospora. This fungus uh, produce volatile compounds like methyl 3, methyl 2 butenoate or MMB that mimicking food cues attractive to nematodes and interfering with ma mating. Many fungi fungus that grow in nitrogen poor environments have likewise evolved carnivorism and the nematodes being the most numerically um, abund abundant uh, animals on earth conveniently became the prey. First, um, they, test, uh, they tested the chemotaxis behaviors of C. elegans in the presence of the fungal culture. For this purpose, they designed a four point chemotaxis um, assay where the fungus oligospora cultures were grown in the quadrants of a plate, following uh, which synchronized uh, adult C. elegans were placed in the middle of the plates and allowed to crawl freely. The number of worms uh, in each of the quadrants was count and the chemotaxis index uh, was determined with this expression. They found that uh, the adult C. elegans were consistently attracted to oligospora, suggesting that the fungus may lure the worms by producing compounds that are attractive to them. This strong attraction uh, was only observed in the adult animals, uh, that was an L1 larvae. Uh, exhibit much weaker attractions to oligospora. Uh, they observe significant attractions toward uh, oligospora in six other Xenorhabditis species, uh, and these three additional uh, nematodes, species that are more phylogenetically distant from C. elegans. They found that these species were also attracted to these fungus, indicating that oligospora produce diffusible compounds that are attractive to a variety of nematodes to help lure to prey and induce trap morphogenesis. To determine uh, whether these diffusible uh, nematode attracting uh, compounds were soluble or volatile, they designed another version of chemotaxis assay using three divisions petri dishes. In this assay, uh, oligospora was grown in one of the three sectors and C. elegans was placed in a separate sector, sector where the worms could only sense the volatile compounds, but not uh, the soluble ones produced by these fungus. And they let the nematodes move freely after which their chemotaxis index was determined they still observe significant attractions of C. elegans stored uh, oligospora, suggesting that these fungus likely produce volatile compounds that are attractive to C. elegans. They identified uh, uh, oligospora derived odorants uh, for solid phase microextractions, and five compounds were identified, but MMB uh, was highly attractive to C. elegans. Uh, to determine um, if uh, oligospora derived um, odorants act activate the C. elegans neurons or AWC neurons, they use uh, mutants that, that compares to wild type animals. Uh, this mutant had a strong defect in MMB attractions. They found that attractions uh, to MMB uh, was both uh, sex and developmental stage uh, dependent as L1 larvae, dowers, and the male animals did not exhibit the strong attractions of this other. Um, and was highly attractive to adults, females, but repulsive to males. When one female and two males were placed uh, on a 3 NG, NGM plate without food, the nematodes uh, mated within average of five minutes. However, if one milliliter of MMB uh, was placed uh, on a lid of the petri dishes in the ma uh, majority of the trails, the animals failed to mate 
within the 30 minutes tracking times. They can use a genetic a screen to identify genes that encode the receptors of MMB and mutagenize animals were given a choice between MMB and isomil alcohol uh, and other, other sense by the EWC neurons. And there's, uh, under these conditions, more than 95% of the wild type animals prefer the uh, MMB. They identify two uh, independent uh, mutants in the genetic screen. Uh, in conclusion, this data has shown that uh, oligospora has evolved to produce olfactory mimics uh, of food and sex cues to lure its nematode prey, revealing a novel molecular mechanism to microscopic pred predator and um, prey interactions. That is all, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can you clearly see my screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, today, I'm going to, to talk about artificial intelligence for precision medicine and better health cares. Um, as we know, precision medicine uh, is an important and growing area of research uh, for the diagnosis of diseases, uh, which allows uh, uh, to design and develop the medication for prevention of specific viruses. Uh, this paper um, focuses on several machine learning, deep learning models and application of AI, which can clear uh, the way for, for a new data-centric area of discovering hair cars. Uh, in this slide, AI has been successfully um, able to, to classify problems using different algorithms and solve precision medicine problems. Uh, on the other hand, AI in her course has the potential to achieve the goals uh, of providing real time and better personalized and population uh, medicine on lower costs. Uh, now we're going to, to talk about uh, traditional medicine versus precision medicine. So, um, in traditional medicine, as you see here in Figure 1, the doctor uses the expertise on trial and based methods uh, based on, on assumptions uh, from the symptoms uh, given by patient. Uh, doctors uh, suggest a medicine with equal uh, doses. Uh, at the same time, uh, precision uh, medicine is the orienting of uh, clinical strategy to the particular characteristics of the individual patient, as uh, shown in figure uh, two. Uh, the doctor suggests uh, medicine um, and those are based on person DNA and personal uh, health information. Regarding the uh, role of artificial intelligence in precision medicine, um, we can say that even precision medicine is not completely uh, possible without the addition of machine learning algorithms to assist in the process. As we saw uh, in the last papers, uh, machine learning is an application of AI um, that can learn and upgrade from experience and without being uh, explicitly coded but, pro but programmer. Uh, most commonly uh, use machine learning algorithms uh, in medicine include uh, support vector machine, deep learning, uh, logistic regression, uh, decision free, random forest, uh, linear regression, net base, uh, k-nearest neighbor and hidden uh, Markov model among, among others as you see here in fewer free. It shows uh, machine learning algorithms uh, are applied uh, for clinical uh, genomics, uh, metabolics, Imagine claim uh, labs, nutrients, and lifestyle data fusion, integration, and analysis. So, machine learning algorithms are integrating multiple uh, data sources to produce more consistent, uh, accurate, and useful uh, information than provided by, by any individual data source. Um, over uh, the last few years, uh, AI approach has been used in new neurodevelopmental disorder, specifically in, in Austin spec uh, disorder, AI algorithms uh, can create uh, an impact in four uh, complex and resolve problems in neuro, neurodevelopmental disorders uh, as, shown in, as shown here in figure four, uh, about identify uh, 
causal genes. AI methods are crucial for identify causal genes and blockages. The models uh, has recently uh, shown reasonable success um, for improving genetic diagnostic and neurodevelopmental disorder. Uh, regarding uh, phenotypic and genetic uh, gener generogeneity, we can say that uh, in the last decades, uh, the digitization of medical uh, health record uh, added uh, a large amount of data related to, to healthcare. So in this slide, the application of AI algorithms uh, may be maybe benef benefited uh, from those digitation efforts uh, that can help establish genotype, phenotype uh, relation for genetic diseases. Uh, about um, gene gene uh, interactions, uh, gene gene interaction is a, a major contributor to phenotypic variants of uh, neurodevelopmental uh, disorder, but there is currently uh, no credible AI algorithm uh, able to, to overcome uh, data on these scales. Um, drug discovery uh, AI models uh, are the frontier uh, for therapeutic uh, intervention and drug designs. Currently, uh, there are uh, 50, 51 food and drug administration approved targeted uh, gene unique uh, drugs for neurology and psychiatric. Um, to finish, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the application of AI in precision medicine. Um, an example is a biomarker development for early uh, stage uh, lung cancer. Uh, this last figure, uh, phi, classify early stage uh, 1A and 1B lung cancer by biomarker uh, that predict risk uh, of recurrence um, generated using a precision medicine research strategy into low risks um, for recurrence and um, high risks for recurrence. So as a final conclusion, uh, we can say that the artificial intelligence uh, takes precision medicine to the next level and, and increase um, the prediction of outcome for patients. Uh, it can also make treatment for much accessible to those who may not be able to, to receive those treatment uh, due to goals and um, health insurance um, at this time. Uh, many thanks for listening. Uh, that's all. Hello, everyone. Uh, you can see my screen? Yes, we can. OK. Uh, in, in this case, I find a uh, um, very simple uh, paper, but it's, uh, for me, it's a, a simple idea and a very useful idea for uh, cell culture, uh, use uh, health and, and hydro health and uh, make a, a, a different uh, measure for, for uh, improve the, the cell culture in, in, in hydro health for uh, different type of cells, OK? Um, you can see is the uh, geometry for a macro device. And it's have a, a, a three uh, input and, and outside uh, and uh, use in the, the chambers in the in the two channel for uh, construct the, the hydrogel, but and use a different hydrogel, but in this case, uh, use a, a collagen uh, and uh, uh, behavior uh, the the cell uh, in in cell culture. Okay. Um, after uh, they uh, measured uh, the, the micro device and and use a uh, uh, the technique and, and compare and, and different technique for for cell culture in in, in hydrogel software conventional uh, macro device on a trans well. Uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, you can see how uh, behavior and and, and uh, flow uh, when uh, inject uh, 
different uh, compounds, uh, for example, uh, these uh, different steps, uh, the classical steps for for use and an hydrogel, but it set up flux flow and after uh, heat and uh, uh, bake for uh, construct uh, the, the collagen cell and, and after uh, uh, grow the the cells, right? Um, after they they uh, see in the in the different the structure on, and the geometry or uh, comprobate this 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 flow is is same in, in, in the different uh, flows and the geometry uh, of a micro device. Uh, next, grow uh, the cells in 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 the macro device for uh, comprove the, the, the cells uh, viability and how the cells uh, behave into the, the hydrogel and uh, in, in the time and uh, they they say that the cells uh, maintained on the, the long time uh, viability it's, it's, it's great for uh, the different techniques or uh, after uh, measure uh, uh, PCR uh, gene expression of differentiation on the uh, different uh, uh, strategy for for uh, show the the, the cells uh, in, in, in this case it's in uh, human and botanical cells these cells uh, have a, uh, it's a sensible or uh, and, and things okay and uh, make sure that the migration cells uh, in, in, in the different uh, structure but comprove the, the cells uh, have uh, a great viability and, 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 and move uh, into a micro device. Uh, in, in, in this paper file, uh, show uh, how cells uh, move in, 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 into the channel and into, uh, into the, the chamber or the, uh, in the expand for uh, hydro health uh, use use a flow for stimulate but the hydro gel is expand in the time and in the conclusion uh, the, the design is it's a useful uh, method for uh, grow the, the endothelium cells and uh, this uh, sample idea, uh, it's a, a high powerful tool for, for cultivating the pigment cell and measure uh, the, the different uh, variables. For example, these uh, the migration cells. It's a very important understand for, for behavior type cells. Okay, great. Thank you for the attention. Presenting this paper and integral integrated microfluidity concentration gradient generator for mechanical stimulation and drug delivery. So, in this paper, the authors took a step forward towards designing an integrated concentration gradient generator capable of providing culture cells with three primary mechanical stimuli, which are precise, diverse, and manageable shear stress, osmotic pressure gradients, and extracellular matrix uh, stiffness. So the device is a two PDMS layer microfluidic chip with a porous membrane sandwiched in between. The bottom layer consists of a cell culture medium uh, reservoir and the upper layer are the, there are two bubble trappers, a concentration graded generator and a membrane based uh, cell culture chamber that mimics the in vivo-like environment in which cells are exposed to shear stress and small pressure gradients. The flow in the upper layer channels first reaches the bubble trappers where the buoyancy force removes the bubbles and traps them in a cylindrical bubble reservoir. And uh, after the bubble removal steps, the free bubble uh, fluid flows through the concentration gradient generator. And finally, there are uh, four different concentrations of the injected drug that uh, form a, a 
hace un industrial culture uh, change. And uh, well, uh, here, uh, figure two demonstrates the simulation results and the optimized geometrical feature for the cell culture chamber. And uh, the step like uh, cross section at the chambers inlet provides more uniform flow and shear stress uh, on all cells at every location of the chamber. They also simulated the values of oxygen and glucose concentration in the cell culture chamber at uh, different flow rates. And uh, the results obtained prove uh, the point that none of the cells at any location of the Moyenno layer will ever suffer from a uh, lack of nutrients on, in all the chip's operational uh, flow rate. And uh, well, here uh, they demonstrate that the dimension and the performance of the engineer concentration gradient and uh, the channel size and the mixing length were designed to have four outlet concentrations with less than 5% deviation from the ideal mixing states. And also the gradient generator maintains its performance and the different inlet flow rates. Then they, uh, well, they characterize the bubble trapper and uh, the bubble trapper reservoir's diameter and height were found uh, in a way so that uh, the buoyancy force could overcome the flow's momentum carrying the bubbles. And so it can remove and store all the uh, bubbles in this uh, cylindrical reservoir. And it was designed also to maintain uh, the uh, reliable performance in uh, high flow rates. And uh, well, as you can see here, the bubble free cell culture chamber and the trap bubbles proved that uh, the design trappers could remove all the bubbles for uh, cell culturing for about two whole days. And they also uh, tested the biocompatibility of the chip for both static and dynamic uh, cell culture assays. And while well, cells were cultured in a shear free uh, environment, the chip was then placed in an incubator and the cells were grown uh, abundantly to form a confluent co co uh, monolayer after two days. And for dynamic cell culturing of the chip, right after this static culturing reached a confluence level of 85%. The cells were uh, incubated also for two days. The bottom layer channel was filled with culture medium and maintained in a quasi-static mode during the process of dynamic culture. And uh, these results show that the chip possesses a high variability rate of about 95%. And uh, well, here you can see uh, in the picture the fluorescence image of the stain cells, which proves the uniformity of the cell uh, monolayer. Next, the concentration gradient generation efficiency was examined experimentally by uh, applying LIF. It's a laser induced fluorescent technique. And rhodamine B was injected in one inlet, and pure distilled water was injected in the other one. And LIF results show that uh, the gradient generator operates stably, and uh, deviation from the ideal simulated concentrations were less than 5%. And uh, one finally, for a, a better visualization of the gradient generation performance, uh, here they use a violet colored water and golden yellow colored water to uh, the chip for uh, better seeing this, well, <laughs> all this that I've been explaining. So uh, in conclusion, they uh, designed, fabricated and quantified an integrated high throughput membrane-based microfluidic concentration gradient generation and the concentration gradient generated facilitates the generation of a vast range uh, of drugs and chemical reagents for high concentrate uh, cell monolayer based assays, while uh, the membrane based cell culture chamber mimics an in vivo environment for cells by imposing fluid shear stress and osmotic pressure gradients simultaneously upon them. So, thank you for listening. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. OK. So I'm going to tell you about this article called Microfluidic Extraction and Digital Quantification of Stipulating Cell-Free DNA from Serum. Um, 
that is about a chip that can isolate purified DNA to make um, a trouble-based digital PCR with some equal liters of uh, biolog biological samples. So it's so specific. This is a, an article from the Institute Curie in Paris. So um, this article is so interesting because uh, they present the design of the device that you can see in this figure. Um, the design of the device is made of a cyclone olefin copolymer um, with a unique channel and a chamber that was treated with some commercial buffers and coating called uh, Pluronic F127. This is um, a, a commercial buffer that generates a special surface to isolate CT circulating tumoral DNA from biological samples of serum or cellular suspensions or blood. The isolation of CT DNA is widely used for tumor growth follow-up and uh, to know the, the tumor mutation burden. So uh, to ensure that ctDNA is being captured, they use magnetic fluorescent beads uh, that were seated inside the device uh, with sample. As you can see in the figure, uh, fluorescent beads and their flow can be detected. And, and here you can see with the um, ring, in green color. Uh, to optimize the device ability to DNA capture some random uh, double strain DNA was seeded into the device and in serum and PBS. As you can see in this figure. And, um, um, and between an 8 and 40 and 80 percent uh, is the capture rate of DNA in serum for healthy patients and is uh, nearly 100% uh, in PBS. Um, using fluorescent primers and proofs, they could detect specific mutation in some cancer-related genes in cells that was previously disintegrated by sonication. As you can see in this figure, you can see two separated dot populations. Um, in in this figure with TP53, that uh, is a common gene uh, evaluated in cancer research. Uh, did that on that population include the spike fluorescent DNA fragments uh, and that include the gene TP53 wild type and mutated. Uh, this graph was calibrated with standard values on the other graph, this one, and they found a positive correlation uh, between destructive mutant DNA on chip, um, spike uh, mutant DNA in serum. Uh, this is the, um, the correlation coefficient uh, near to one. Um, the same experiment was carried out, but with some patient serum samples that have breast cancer and colon here in this figure, and they have breast cancer and colon cancer, and they tried to detect correlations in obtained values in chip based DNA concentration and to sustain in conventional spin column. And they obtained uh, high values of positive correlation. Uh, here you can see. Um, here, here you can see that they could amplify samples that have TP53 mutated and wild type, and here uh, KRAS mutated and wild type. Uh, basically, they established that all biological samples were higher than the limit of detection determined above for uh, spiked cell-free serum in the optimization of the technique. Um, well, these experiments were made as a, uh, as a proof of concept of biological sample optimizations to detect some specific mutation related to cancer and tumor mutations, a tumor mutation burden um, that can be a prognostic marker.
And that's all. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, this is my uh, my topic, uh, effect of pesticide uh, resid on simulated beer uh, brewing that is innovation elimination by pesticide degraded enzyme. Um, uh, for pesticides, uh, uh, resins uh, using uh, barley uh, uh, brewing uh, were selected to investigate the effects or 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 brewing. Uh, the influence were found to be different for various agricultural products. Teddy uh, Mephon, uh, 25 uh, uh, milligrams uh, per mil, 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 milliliter affect the progress of the preparation. Um, uh, etamethyl sulfuromethyl inhibition of, of mil inhibition. Uh, okay, in this part, um, a ten, um, a 10 grams of malware crush with a, a pesty solution. They mix with a uh, 40 milliliter of uh, the ionized water. The final concentration of triadimephone, uh, um, uh, carbon dacim and carbonyl was um, uh, 15, 25 and uh, uh, 2 uh, milligrams per milliliter respectively. The addition of pesticides uh, was carried out as a control. Uh, the thermostable amylase was added and steered at 95 uh, centigrade to uh, achieve the liquefaction of the starch. Uh, after this, glucoamylase was added at uh, 65 uh, centigrade. Um, in this part, uh, the effect of different pesticides uh, resides of malt uh, was evaluated. Um, the receipts uh, show that uh, there are significant differences in both glucose and fermentable sugar. Um, uh, in, in, in this part, uh, part B, uh, in the fermentation stage, the glucose concentration show some difference um, sulforometil and carbonyl, uh, zero per um, 13 and zero per uh, 16. And uh, for the concentration of fermentable sugars, it is trade with different pesticides. Uh, this shows an increased trend, uh, yes, produce and seen by itself. In part C part, uh, and part D, uh, show that yes, uh, biomass and ethanol produce, uh, tradimephone and carbendazim. In, 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 part, in part C, uh, her defect of pesticides uh, resides on, on yes, growing is shown compared to control. Um, triadimephone and carbendazim uh, don't control uh, microbial growth. Uh, in part D, yes, called use glucose to produce alcohol in all five groups. Um, similarly, uh, triadimephone and carbendazim inhibit ethanol production. And, and this part, uh, in, in figure three, the, the fate of pesticides uh, resides during uh, beer brewing. Uh, triadimephone and carbendazim decrease by uh, 21% and 23% respectively. Um, the boiling process could cause uh, volatilization, absorption, uh, pyrolysis on, or hydrolysis of pesticides. And, and conclusion, uh, the fermentation of ethanol was improving for this reason. In this article, the innovation of fermentation by pesticide resid is resolved. Thanks.
Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Today, I will briefly talk, talk about a very interesting topic from a paper where chaos theory is applied to a well studied by a biological system. See, the paper is titled Capture, Capturing the Continuous Complexity of Behavior in C. Uh, first of all, I mentioned that chaos theory is a file of mathematical physics that deals with non-linear dynamic systems that, uh, that are highly sensitive to initial conditions that is, for a small variation in these conditions, the posterior dynamics undergoes large variation to the point of the dynamic behavior of the system cannot be predict, predict in the short time. And that is pure theory. However, the dynamic systems evolve deterministically. Okay. In, this, in this paper, uh, they details the construction and application of a behavioral state space, inspired by the similar approach of, of dynamic systems that is as a phase space. And the figure one can show a diagram of the mathematical procedures in the form. Essentially from the world's position mismo here a matrix mathematical transformation phi sub k is made that takes this measured values in a intra topologically equivalent but essentially different from the original space. In this topological space, the name delay in video. After the transformation, in this transformation, they applied reductional dimension with a matricial equation here across the gamma gamma m and obtained obtained another another trajectories in the new space. In figure two show the mathematical details of this study, uh, but I, I prefer to, to see another figure, figure three, the result. In, in figure three A, in, we, we can see motion, the, the motion of walls in two dimensions on a flat agar plate. And this motion can be captured with a high resolution taking microscopy, give a multidimensional time series of posture change. We, we can see in the different positions of the world and different angle of this motion. Figure 3a show the two-dimensional trajectory of the CA. In, in, in a 10 minutes of 
emotions the, of the world. Trajectories in two dimensions for a prominent circular band indicating nearly constant amplitude body wave during forward locomotion. Uh, in another world, uh, the dynamics of the motion of the world is similar to harmonic uh, harmonic motion in physics. Trajectories in three-dimensional space we can see here. This trajectory shows large excitations in excitation in, sorry, in each of the three projections correspond to forward, backward, and tuning locomotion of the world. And in this trajectory, this event show, show us the three, um, three modes of motion of the, of the three elements. Mm. Figure four, figure four, B, show a, an, ex, an example of orbitals of the sea elegance in, in two modes, in blue mode and orange mode, and we, we can see in the in the phase space in the in, trajectory respectively. Mm. The author compute of the orbit the Lyapunov spectrum for the steady space of the world and find two positive exponent exponent lambda one and lambda two and a third near zero exponent here lambda one Lambda two and lambda three near from the zero number. Uh, the sum of all the amount of exponent is negative. It's very important this result because that the system uh, that the system's behavior is dissipative. It's dissipative. Dissipative with the the of exponent plus the, traject the circular trajectory in two dimensions indicate the harmonic motion. Mm. Therefore, mm, as symmetric Lyapunov spectrum indicate damped driving Hamiltonian dynamics. Here is the distribution of Lyapunov exponent and very, very interesting that the biological system um, behavior similar to uh, very, very um, knowledge, known systems of physics that oscillator, a uh, damper driving oscillator. So for example, pendulum, pendulum, uh, Damped drive pendulum is very, very uh, famous with uh, in physics. Conclusion The motion of the C elegance tends to chaos behavior and cannot be easily explained by a completely stochastic model. Very complicated motion of the CLS and the symmetry form of the Lyapunov spectrum suggests that the world's behavioral dynamics can be interpreted as a normal mode of a system of complex dampened and driving Hamiltonian oscillators. Wow, it's very, very, in, uh, very surprising. It's behavior and the geological system. Mm -hmm. For the uh, Giovanni and Andrea, I subject, I subject um, to read uh, 
de Reference 55. Eh, the, the behavior of the elegance is simpler than, than that of most animals. The quantitative dynamics of world eh, define a straightforward interpretation of even objective models. See, for example, reference 55 for a review. In this reference, eh, the dynamic of the world is explained very well. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see yes. yes. Okay. I mean, I see. Uh, in this occasion, I, I'm going to talk about this uh, topic is maximizing interfacial bonding strength between PDMS and PMMA. And they use uh, different substrates. Uh, in order to uh, perform a microfluidic device. And also they uh, characterize the, the flow rate with a uh, high pressure. Um, we'll see the, this is the, uh, the way that fabricate a microfluidic device. They use a, a micro modeling in order to perform uh, micro channels in, 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 in a polymethyl metacrylate. And they use oxygen plasma in order to attach uh, the PDMS uh, layer. Both are uh, both are using uh, oxygen plasma, and then they use different chemicals in order to uh, attach uh, or in order to bonding the both uh, surfaces. This is the uh, this is the chemical for uh, for for uh, metacrylate, and this is the uh, chemical for PDMS after oxygen plasma. And this is the way that they use. Uh, they use the uh, stream pump. They use a, a, a sensor in order to characterize the, the pressure. And they use a camera and to take pictures. And this is the, uh, this is the setup how it looks. OK, the first experiment. Uh, uh, the first thing that they that they perform is uh, a build different uh, micro mixers in order to see uh, what is the uh, if they lose a uh, fluid or flow depends of the the pressure. Um, uh, this is the the difference. This is a, a same photography uh, between the metal metal and PDMS. And uh, the perform from these channels are bigger. Uh, let me show you. Uh, what is the... Okay, this is the 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 distance, or this is the the length of the microfluidic uh, channels. No? Is is between 100 microns to uh, to 500 microns. It means that there are, are, are bigger channels, but uh, the the microfluidic device is only performed for this uh, this size of channels, and also to 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 high pressure because uh, they use high pressures and high flow rates to perform this, and then they also perform um, a valve. Uh, this is a a valve with uh, a membrane with PDMS. This is the channel. This is the membrane, and they, this is the the control for the uh, the actuation port for the valve. They use a pneumatic valve. It means they use a compressor in order to push the the membrane of PDMS, and this is how it looks when the valve is open and closed. Um, and this is the the pressure uh, actor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they perform, as I told you, different uh, chemicals in order to see what is the the best uh, bonding, uh, the, the best uh, concentration for for this GPTMS concentration and up test concentration for for PDMS. 
they use different concentrations and they perform and they found that what is the best concentration for this. And they use the characterization with, with pressure in order to see what is the maximum pressure that they, they can use in, in, in the microchannels in order to see if it is the bonding process, the bonding process is correct. Uh, this is the flow rate that they use. They use uh, like a very uh, huge flow rate and also the pressure also is, is bigger than normal that we use. But it's interesting to see how the, this uh, PDMES is attached to a meta, metamethyl metacrylate with chemicals and the oxygen plasma. Uh, this is the different, they use different liquids also with different uh, densities. They use different, uh, in order to see if the microbiology's function correct. And this is the, 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 the pressure, the, that how it looks, the actuation air pressure. Okay, this is all, thank you.